Hello, brothers and sisters. Today I wanted to go to day three of creation, but I'm not fully ready yet, but I'm just going to give you a little bit. So let's go to Genesis 1.11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. We're going to start with whose seed is in itself. This is the word of God written on your heart. Grass is the children of the earth. The seed is the word of God. The tree is the children of God. The fruit is how you as a vessel of the Lord makes fruit for the kingdom of heaven. So that's to give you a little idea of what I'm seeing in Genesis. So now we're going to move to the point of this video today. Let us begin by saying, The evil in this world hates the teaching of the truth of grace. Why? Because when you understand that you are saved through the abundance of grace, through the cross of our Lord and Savior, through His precious blood, that you are clothed in his righteousness, then they, the wicked, can't put you on the ground with their foot on your neck. They have no power over you, for you are predestined by our Almighty God. He has chosen you out of the world, and he alone has your name engraved on his own hands. It is through the Holy Spirit that truth is revealed to you. Jesus came full of grace. He imparts grace into you as a free gift through His obedience, as He alone came into this world to fulfill every word that was written through the Holy Spirit. God stepped down from His house and wrapped Himself in the garment of flesh, the promise proclaimed from the beginning. Remember that God took the dust of the ground and made Adam. He then took the man and put him in the garden of God. After eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God then clothed, th clothed them in coats of skin. Genesis 3.23 Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. In the Garden of Eden we transgressed the Lord God's law, and we were scattered throughout the whole earth in a metaphoric state likened to the children of Israel being scattered, as they repeatedly disobeyed God's sacred laws. In this falling away, God causes us to rise and fall, that we might see our iniquities and humble ourselves. We are in the lands of our captivity, and should praise God continually with our mouths, minds, and spirits, with much supplication, a desperate longing to seek His face a silent cry that He alone can hear, a cry from the depths of your very being, a cry that can shake the very foundation of this world, a cry that would tear the very fabric of time itself, a cry so focused that you are immediately taken up in a fiery chariot into the throne room of our Lord. A cry that surrounds you in his loving embrace. When we are home, we are comfortable and at ease. However, in a faraway land that is strange to us, we are uncomfortable. Our minds are in distress and confusion. We are restless and desperate. Are we not uncomfortable and confused about much of life? If we praised God in His house, how much more should we praise Him being outside His house? God is invisible to us in the aspect of physically seeing Him with our eyes. 
But the more you seek righteousness and turn our hearts away from sin, in the same likeness does God's face begin to turn back to you as he is holy. The righteousness we seek is through Christ Jesus as he is our righteousness. Just as Abraham believed on the Lord and it was counted to him as righteousness. We believe on the Lord and he counts it to us as righteousness. There is not one who can escape the hand of the Father. All shall be touched, for he created all things, and none shall escape his judgment, his righteous judgment. The Lord's hand has comfort for the seeker of his face, and a chastising hand for the seeker of wickedness. And we as individuals conform to both good and evil. In the comfort of God's hand, you, you feel happiness and joy in knowing Him. God's chastising hand gives us a feeling of being unfulfilled and lost. This is on many levels of understanding. We are captives living in the enemy's territory, as when Daniel was in his captivity. He was offered the food from the king's table, but he did not wish to become softened or changed by partaking in the enemy's many luxuries and to, and to forget where he came from. In this, so are we tempted in the enemy's many pleasures and lying wonders. Would we reject being changed from where we came from and submit to the foreign land and be consumed with its ways? Daniel kept his honor and God intact through his entire being and God made him a great man. Where? In the land of his captivity, just like Joseph. He kept the statutes and understanding through God and his homeland, looking forward to the cross, just as we look back to the cross. Thus, choosing goodness, grace, and mercy through God, or conforming to rebelliousness and wickedness of the adversary. God is invisible to us in the aspect of seeing him with our eyes but we see him in everything, and his blessings are the stepping stones that lead to his everlasting bounty of love as he leads us home. The stepping stones are revealed through the Holy Spirit. Jesus placed those stepping stones as he carried you home, carrying his lost sheep who strayed from the flock. We are in the land of our captivity, however, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are made free of our bondage and captivity. Through these things, we see only Christ Jesus, our Lord, and his everlasting love for us. In this land of captivity, there's an image, an idol put up for everyone to worship. And we need look further, no further than Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were captives in Daniel's time and would not bow down to the idol of Nebuchadnezzar and were thrown into the fire. The king looked and saw four. This shows several things. One is that two or more gathered together in my name and I am there in your midst. And two... You are surrounded by the holy fire of God. His fire frees you of your bonds. This is a visual of being close to Jesus, or in other words, being joined to the Lord as one. Praise be to his name forever and ever.